Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome back to LDRS Creative. I am Angie Hunt, in case you're new here, and across from me is uh, Mr. Hunt, uh, my uh, husband slash producer and uh, my, my right hand man. <laughs> Welcome to everybody coming in. I'm going to apologize. My energy level is a little bit low right now. I'm trying. I actually, I've, I've learned at this point in my life. How old am I, Alan? I'm 50, 55. And I, I just learned the other day that I should not go to bed. I shouldn't go to bed with high hopes. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never do. <laughs> I went to bed the other night and <clears throat> I felt great. And I woke up in the morning and I could barely move my right arm. <laughs> I have no idea what happened in the middle of the night. Anyway, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in a little bit of pain, I guess is my point. So if you see me cringe or if you hear me wince, it's because it's kind of hard to move my right arm and I am right-handed um, and I'm going to be painting tonight. Go figure. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to get through this. We're going to make the best of it and we're going to see if, we're going to see if I can create um, while, uh, while I'm a little down and out. Um, but anyway, welcome to everybody who's coming in. It's so, yeah, Deanna says, wait until you're in your 70s. I can't even imagine what that's going to be like for me. <laughs> it's just crazy. But I'll tell you this, this happens whenever we have too much going on. I, I won't go into all, all the details, but I was in a car accident years ago. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't fatal. Let's put it that way, obviously. But it wasn't really, really bad. I didn't break my back or anything. But I've I have an issue for the rest of my life that I have to deal with. And so when I have times of, you know, a lot of stress, a lot going on, which is usually our year end, um, it kind of creeps up on me. And just the stress and the hustle and bustle of everything, it uh, causes things to, to kind of go awry. Anyway, that's where we're at right now. And I'll be going back to the chiropractor tomorrow. Yay. But anyway, hello to everybody who's coming in. It's so nice to see so many names that I recognize all the time. And, you know, and I always love to see new people coming in too. So welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody. I see Carol Weatherspoon um, is, is out there. Hey, Carol, Carol, if you don't know who she is, she's not only on our design team, but she also is, um, is our HSN gal. So she goes on in my stead now. Um, on HSN, so it's lovely to have her here. I see Carletta is here, Teresa Jarvis, Cindy Patty, Dieta is here, um, Becky and Gail, uh, Cheryl, I know I saw Sandy Yee out there too, uh, Nicole, so many people coming in. Thank you guys so much. Um, we do have a lot to go through today, so I'm not gonna, you know, and, and you guys aren't here to listen to me chit chat anyway. So we are gonna get rolling. I'm gonna be working with uh, the Spellbinders Better Press um today with our impression letterpress pl uh, press plates so we're going to be doing uh some letterpress tonight i'm super excited to be doing it i love doing this it's a really really fun technique um i'm very tactile so i've been told as well and i just i love the way it feels i love the way that it looks on my cards so oh welcome to nancy coming in from omaha and i see angel just came in uh, donna is here from pennsylvania barbara just came in corinne hey girl corinne's here from ohio um vicky uh, so many people still coming in so thank you thank you thank you um, but anyway, um, if you don't have um, a better press or some kind of a letter press platform, it's okay. You can still watch and enjoy. And, you know, these are designs that you can create. Um, uh, the stuff that I do doesn't have to be done with letter press. If you have some floral uh, stamps, you can achieve, you know, the same kind of thing that I'm going to be working on, that I'm going to be doing tonight. So there's, there are going to be some techniques in here. I'm going to be doing some watercoloring. Um, so I don't want you to think that, you know, oh, I don't, I, I'm not into the better press. I don't do letter press. So I'm, this isn't for me. There's always going to be uh, some tips and tricks and crafting things that we're going to be doing. So, so please stick around, even if you're not doing the better press, that's okay. Um, I do want to mention, because we have had some questions about our letterpress dies. If you haven't heard me say this already, there is only one factory that actually produces these special um, letterpress dies or press plates, as, as Spellbinders calls them. They are technically dies. Um, they're a die with a very special patented coating on them. The factory that produces those holds the patent. And um, that is where Spellbinders has theirs done, and that's where we have ours done. So side by side, ours are manufactured the exact same process, the exact same place as Spellbinders. So they're really the exact same dies. They're just our designs. So uh, you're going to see the same quality with them 
and I'm going to be using our watercolor paper, which is absolutely fantastic with it, um, with them as well as some other things. So we're going to go ahead and switch the camera. Um, when it gets to the point where we're going to be doing the letter press, I am going to ask Alan to come over here and help me with that a little bit uh, because I can't do much with my arm. But we're going to get rolling. So let's go ahead and uh, switch the camera. Let's. Okay, there we go. This is what we're going to be creating now. I made this already. We're working with the clematis. Um, it's one of our brand new um, press plates. And um, I did this in pink because I wanted you to see it in that. And I'm going to recreate this for you. And we're going to do it in purple. So we're going to do two of the same card, but with two different uh, colors. So this is a gorgeous, brilliant, bright pink. And it's just a very loose and simple um, watercolor that we're going to be applying to it. Um, I did this using sorry <laughs> this is the clematis all right so this is it'll our impression dies or our press plates up in the corner will say impression die letter press so if it says letter press you know this is one of our letter press press plates we will tell you which one is the impression press plate and then this also comes with a cutting die that you can use in your um, you know, with your regular plates that come with your die cutting machine. When it comes to the actual press plates, you do want to use something like the Better Press uh, platform instead of the regular uh, plates that come with your die cutting machine. But with the cutting die, you go back to using your regular cutting plates. We do explain all of that on the back here so that you know the difference of what you can do with them. And for more information, you can look to our website and you can also look to uh, to the Spellbinders website to see which die cutting machines you can use. You can use, of course, the Platinum, uh, but there's you, know, you can use the Big Shot. There's several that you can use. So this is our Clematis. I'm also going to be working with our Flourishes. This is also another uh, letterpress impression die or press plate. We've got four of these in here. They're absolutely, go absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to be working with one of these. And then um, our Love and Friendship. Uh, letter press and again we've got 10 letter press here and then 10 cutting dies we explain everything on the back but you can see on the back exactly what these sentiments look like and um, just in case anybody was wondering if you recognized any of these when you got them in your hot little hands these are actually from Winnie the Pooh these are little Winnie the Pooh sayings and I absolutely love that so these are the three items that I'm working with today um, in addition to our watercolor paper I'm going to be working with that as well. Um, so let me see what else I've grabbed. I've got some, I'm going to go ahead and move this to the side. I've got some um, paint brushes. Oh my God, my arm, sorry. <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm right handed, so I keep reaching for things with that arm. I've got my water here. Um, I am going to set these aside because we first, first thing we have to do is the letter pressing. Um, but. Let's see. Here is my, what is this? This is my watercolor paper right here. I've already trimmed it. So this piece right here on the left, you can see there's a, they're almost identical in color. Um, this is my Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock, 110 pound cardstock. I'm not going to be using my, my press plates on here. This is what I use all the time for my card bases for um, when I'm stamping, you know, with, with just about everything. But I'm not going to do that with watercolor. I need to use a watercolor paper. So you'll notice these are almost identical in color. When I was searching for a watercolor paper, I wanted something that was going to work and coordinate beautifully together with the with uh, with our Nina um, paper. Um, but I also wanted something that was going to be really good and um, and thick. Um, it was going to take the water beautifully, be really smooth and really creamy. It's almost identical to the uh, the Better Press paper that Spellbinders has, by the way, and it works beautifully with the um, the letter press. So we're going to start with that, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my dies. Um, grab this one here and let me get my little sentiment here okay so you can see I've used these already so I'm going to be working with my 
my clematis. I'm not going to be cutting the flower out, but I do need this dye, and I'll show you why when we get towards the end. Um, Corinne says you can color with alcohol markers on that paper on the watercolor paper. Awesome. You know, I haven't done that. So Corinne, thank you. That is very good to know. <laughs> Um, so I grabbed um, one of my sentiments, one of my flourishes, and my, um, my clematis. Now this one, my watercolor paper, this I, is actually trimmed to four inches by five and a quarter. So it's a quarter inch shy, both vertically and horizontally, quarter inch shy of an A2. Now I'm going to get my better press out. And... Now, this is always a little awkward for me. Let me move that water out of the way. I'm afraid I'm going to spill it, knock it, and get it on my computer or something. So this part is always a little tricky for me. I'm, we're going to go ahead and zoom out, Alan. Okay, a couple things I do want to mention. Um, because I didn't notice this right from the get-go. Um, I was automatically, see how it says better press here, and then it says better press here, right? Well, here. I was automatically, for some reason, putting my plates like this so I had better press at, at, in the same place, you know, on the same side. But if you notice your little lines, your marks aren't going to line up on here. So make sure when you're using this, it says but the base has better press on one side and your plate has better press on the other side. And that way all of your corners are going to line up. I did it a couple of times and I went, what am I doing? <laughs> Why isn't this lining up? Why is everything off? You cannot universally have this go in either direction. You can't flip it. You can't flip it. No. I mean, I can flip it like yeah. this. Yeah. I think I can flip it like this. Okay. Yeah. So like yes. But one of them says better press on one side. One will say better press on the other side. So it took me a minute to figure out what I was doing wrong. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you do this is that, you know, when you're stamping, you know, if I was going to be stamping and stamping, let's say this was a stamp instead of a die, I would line that up exactly where I want it to be, right? And then I would stamp it down. Well, you kind of have to think backwards with this a bit because this is actually going to go face up. Now, the better press, this platform here um, is magnetic, which is really nice. Um, but you kind of have to think a little bit backwards with how you're going to be placing things. So, for example, if I want my sentiment to be on the right side of my card, okay, like this one is, all right, <laughs> you would think, okay, it's a stamp. I'm going to place it over here, right? Well, no, because <laughs> everything is backwards. So you actually have to place it on the left side over here because this paper, when, when it's on here, is going to come in upside down. So you have to think backwards. They should have put right and left on it. I know, you, you, you do. You have to think backwards. So, you know, it's, and it's not always easy. You have to have, what do, what do they call that? It's, um, um, image? no, it, um, what's the word I'm looking for um, with how your brain thinks? It's, uh, uh, obviously my brain isn't thinking. Yeah. So let's just forget it. Um, <laughs> So, no, there's a word with um, being able to, spatial reasoning. It's spatial reasoning. That's what it's called. Okay, so I've got my little flourish here. Now, I do need to bear in mind, now, they, they have the little measurements here, and it says A2. Now, I need to bear in mind that I cut mine a little bit smaller. So, my card is going to be, because I cut a quarter inch off of both sides, um, it, it's actually going to be, when I center it, an eighth of an inch all around. Um, so I need to make sure I, I, I allow for that. And so I'm going to place these on here. I'm going to move this up just a wee bit. And I'm going to move this up too. And just kind of tuck them right in. That's not where I want it. I'm going to move this up. I think it'll be easier. I'm going to tuck it. Now I'm going to go right along the line there. Pay attention and make sure you've got things straight. You know what? I'm going to do it like this. So I know. You want to zoom in, Alan? Sure. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I have my words centered 
over the top of my flourish from left to right. And I think that looks pretty good. All right. <clears throat> So notice I have a little WC on the back. When I cut, when I cut my watercolor paper, I, I like to put a WC on the back for watercolor. That way when it gets mixed in with my other paper, I, I don't forget which is which. <coughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tape this onto the top of this plate. I'm gonna center it in the A2 area and just give it a little bit of tape in a couple of places. Now you're going to see me working with um, our hybrid ink. It's the same kind of ink as the Better Press ink, believe it or not. And um, it's absolutely wonderful and it works beautifully. It's a solvent ink, so your Better Press ink is a solvent ink. Um, our hybrid ink is a solvent ink. And, and can you open the drawer? I can't do it. <laughs> um, our hybrid ink is a solvent ink, so it works. It's like magic. It's absolutely stunning um, with these dyes. Now, I do have this for when I, this is just damp. It's my little damp cloth. Because um, I'm going to over ink. I just know I will. It's, it's my style. It's what I do. <laughs> So I'm going to get this inked up. I'm just going to ink in black and I'm going to go ahead and just give this a wipe just so that I get some of that excess off of there for when this presses down. Now, if you're not familiar with this, the, the better press, I do have one of the shims underneath here. Um, I like how it works with one shim. I'm going to go ahead and place this on the top and I'm gonna let Alan run this. Alan, you gotta get that out of there. Oh, Hurry it. <laughs> I don't want the ink to start to dry. Okay, so oh, Alan's gonna right. run that through. Because I, I can't. There was a time yeah. to it. <laughs> well, it's ink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he just ran that through my Platinum 6. So he's helping me today. Oh my gosh, I hope it works. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that beautiful? Keep me in your heart, I'll stay there forever. Absolutely stunning. It's crisp, oops, let's go like this, put it down here so we stay in focus. It's crisp, it's clean, it's pressed into the paper, it's inked beautifully. Um, it's just gorgeous. Our, our watercolor paper really is amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give these a little bit of a wipe getting the excess off there. If any of you watched our um, our Instagram, then you saw that Erica did a, um, a reel on our Instagram where you could let her press, you could ink it up with our hybrid inks, you could let her press it not once, but twice for a second generation or three times for a third generation, so you don't even have to ink it a second or third time and the ink gets lighter and lighter and it was just gorgeous and it turned out a really beautiful kind of light gray. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this tape a little bit off to the side here. And I'm going to put one more over here just to Make sure everything stays on here. Because I'm gonna have those flowers kind of come up from the bottom here. So again, you gotta think spatial reasoning. Where is this going to go? If I want it to be on the left, then I need to put it on the right on here. <laughs> I know, it's awkward. Let's do it this way so you can see what I'm doing better. So if I want my flowers to end up on the left, because I flip it over, I have to have my flowers on the right. And one of the things you kind of got to pay attention to is, um, let me see, I'm going to go this way. Making sure that you leave, or where's it going to go? Making sure that you leave, um, you don't want the dye to go off the sides of here. 
because it has to fit through your machine. So remember that. Let me move this over a little bit. I don't want this up too high because I have to remember I have, I had things up there. So I'm going to lower this down a little bit. So you're looking at the A2. I'm looking outline. at yeah. I'm looking at that A2 outline oh, there, okay. and I'm sense. remembering that I put my. Let's go like this. I had this, if you recall, this flourish was like right here, okay? So this is about where my flourish was. So I'm going to position this die here so it kind of comes up underneath it a little bit, all right? And this is where I'm going to be now. I'm, I'm going to come in about an eighth of an inch on either side. But make sure that this die is fully on your plate. If it goes on the outside, you're not going to be able to get it through your machine because you're going to hit the sides of it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get this inked up. Alan, you should probably come over here. <laughs> so this is just my Raven hybrid ink that I'm inking. Okay, get this good and inked up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get any little bits of excess that I don't even think I got much excess anywhere. Let me see if I got a little bit right here. Nope, good. All right, so I'm going to lay this down. All right, now Alan's going to run this through for me. So this is the hybrid ink that I was using. It's Raven. Now we've got... 36 colors of this so you can actually use all kinds of color combinations um, with your hybrid inks in these look how pretty oh uh oh uh oh i went over my tape <laughs> so showing people what not to do well i'm going to show you that you can fix that so i'm going to put this <laughs> up here i'm going to put that up here that's actually right over here it's actually right over here, so I'm going to give that another little ink. I'm going to run it through again. Actually, now that I look, I missed a little bit up in here, too. And if this doesn't work, we'll do it again, right? What's, what's the problem? So we're going to run that through. But, Alan, I don't want you to run it all. Bring it over here. Run it about halfway. We're, we're going to run this about halfway through and then back again. Okay. Oh, do it? Help me. There you go. All right, run it back. Oh. <laughs> and Wendy Weiner. All right, let's see if that worked. Oh my gosh, please tell me it worked. It worked. Look, we did a repair job because I didn't move anything. All right. Now, this little bit of ink here, don't worry about it. Look at that. Comes right off. Squeaky clean. Squeaky clean. I mean, I wouldn't let it sit there and dry, but it does come off if you get it right away. All right, so we've got that little bit on there. It's a little bit different than how my first one came out, but that's okay. So now I'm going to position, I'm going to give this a little bit of a clean. I don't want it all over my hands. Okay. So now we've got to position this for the top. Magnet. There we go. Hmm. Let's see. Um... Where do I want this to be? I'm thinking. Hmm. It's going to go up here. Okay. Because I want it on, this is where my spatial reasoning comes. Remember I said I, if I want it on the left, I have to place it on the right. So i got to think about what I'm doing. 
and I don't want this to come in too far. So think about where your A2 lines are. I'm going to line this up and see how far down that is going to come. And I think it's a little bit too far. So I'm going to pop this back up here. I just want a little bit. Just a little bit on that edge. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead again and put my paper down. I'm going to tape this down. Now I want to make sure I don't get any tape up around that corner because I don't, I want to make sure it's not in the way of, of the ink. Let me move this over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to tape this down, kind of center it. There's one. I'm going to put this kind of low here. And I think I can come up on this corner. And I'm going to do one more over here. just want to make sure, because my tape is getting a little weak because I've added it and removed it a couple of times. I'm reusing the same tape. So let's just tape those down. But I'm going to keep this area free. All right. So Alan, you're going to have to come over here again. I'm going to ink this up. Just ink up the part that I need to use. I'm going to give this a quick little wipe wherever I might have some excess ink. Lay this on here and run it through, running it through the platinum. That's what Alan's doing. There you go, give you something pretty to look at. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Look how beautiful. Okay. First things first, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to set this aside for a moment. And I'm going to wipe up my plate. All right. So wipe that up. I'm going to wipe up my dye, get any excess off of it. Don't worry about whether or not it leaves ink behind on your dye, if it stains your dye, OK? We're crafting. We don't expect everything to stay perfectly clean and new all the time. If I wanted my stuff to stay new all the time, I wouldn't be using it at all, right? Then I wouldn't be a crafter. I'd be a collector, which is okay, too, especially when it comes to paper. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no problem with collecting paper. Okay, so if you do have ink on here, all right, Turn to your Extreme Clean. If you want that cleaned up, use your Extreme Clean. We're going to get that cleaned up. With the new label. With the new <laughs> label. With the new, new label. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going to take a lot of that up. OK. There you go. So it gets a lot of that extra up. All right, so we are done with this part now. All right, Mr. Hunt, I can't lift it. What are you trying to lift? <laughs> I need you to take this. You just want it out of your way? Yes, I need it out of my way. Thank you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this tape off of here. And look at what we've done. Look how pretty that is. I just think it's gorgeous. You can create whatever designs you want. It's just so pretty. So hybrid inks, like I said, it's a solvent ink, right? has a permanent quality to it. That means that I can color with Copic markers. It also means that I can watercolor. So that's what we're going to do. We're probably going to go over in time today, by the way. Just FYI. So let's go ahead and zoom out. These are my, well, I don't know what that says. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, they're, I don't know how to say it, Kur, kurataki, kur, you know kur, kurataki, put something back, like that. Anyway, up. huh? Put, it back up. put what back up where? This? Yeah. Let's see if I can translate. Are you going to translate that? Uh, Alan's got his you know phone. I'll take it. Anyway, yeah. they're Gan, Ganzai Tambi. 
Okay, these are these are my these are amazing watercolor paints. If you're ever looking for watercolor paints, get a set of these. They're absolutely remarkable. This is what they look like. This comes in there. All right, so it's uh, uh, I think it's Kurataki. I think is what they said when I was at the trade show. Uh, uh, Genzai Tambi 36 color set we don't sell these but they really are amazing um, everything is numbered here um, in English as well so it'll say like number 32 35 34 and so on you can you can put these in whatever order you want this is the order they came in but there's corresponding numbers on here too so you can see like what your numbers are they're really really cool I absolutely love can, love 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 can these you tell when your numbers up from that? I don't even know how to respond to that <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, my initial sample I did in um, in purple. I'm sorry, pink. I'm doing it again where I don't know my colors. Um, so I'm going to do this in purple just so I have two different versions of the same thing. Um, you know, these come with um, uh, like your you know some metallics and you know just sparklies, and I've got others others in, in metallics. These are my favorite watercolors. Um, here is my water. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to zoom in while I paint. And um, I am not going to be precise and try and be perfect in everything with this. Um, I just want to have fun with it. Okay. So um, there's one purple in here. It's, it's number 139 or 139. So I'm going to find that in here. Um, let's see, where is it? It's probably in here somewhere. It's right here. Here's my purple. So I'm going to go ahead and start, do I want this brush? No, I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get started. I'm going to start on this one. This was the last bit here that I had used. 139 is right here. Let's go ahead and get some water in here. All right. Where's my... All right. I also have a little piece of... Um, cloth here too so that I can brush off on that a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over and just get a little bit of water. You're going to see me kind of go here and there with my color, meaning I'm going to um, add some color in. That's too much, way too dark. I'm going to add some color on one little flower petal and then I'm going to move around kind of skip one and go to the next one okay so I'm going to get a little bit of water in just a tiny little bit of water I'm going to come in with some color maybe not that much color that purple is really strong and I'm literally just going to pull some color in it leaving a little bit of white kind of at the tips is totally fine um, I've just cleaned off my brush and I'm going to kind of smooth that out a little bit where I feel like it got a little too dark. Um, I'm going to come into this one over here. I'm not going to try and make these look real. I just want to add a little bit of color to them. Get a little bit of that purple and bring some color in, maybe a little more. If you feel like it's too strong, go back into your water and brush off a little bit and just kind of move that color around a bit. All right. A little bit here. Water on my brush. There we go and a tiny little bit of color up in here. I'm just getting water right now, and then a little bit of color. Brush some of that off, because I have too much. If it, if it comes out looking almost black, then I, I feel like I have too much. I don't want that much. I just want it to be kind of purpley. So that's all I'm gonna do. Well, I'm gonna do a little bit on this one right here. Um, Cheryl says, I never thought about doing watercolor on a pressed image. I think it's really nice because you don't have to push a lot. And so you don't lose that wonderful 
um, texture that you feel on there. I just, I love to feel that texture. What's, what are you laughing at? Get your hands off my texture. Get your hands off. <laughs> All righty. So now I'm going to come in here to this side and just add a little bit of water. I'm not soaking it, just a tiny bit. And I do want to get more water in here because that's, my paint was getting dry. Pick up a little bit. So I cleaned off my brush. I pick up a little bit and I'm literally just going to kind of scribble some in here. Add a little more water and just kind of move that around a little bit. Clean off my brush. I'm going to pull down from the top. Okay, so I will get more color in there right now. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a base get some water in there we go I like leaving the ends kind of white I think it's pretty get some water in here touch down boom We get a little more right in here. Just move that around. And it's okay if it ends up drying and leaving like some little hard edges in there. That's okay. Just kind of let it, let it, let the water do its job. We're going to add another layer to it anyway. All right, so a little bit of purple there. I'm going to come out to this one. Notice I, I touch down with the strongest color, like where I want it the darkest. It's like tighter in, you know, into the flower. That's where you, wherever you want your strongest color is where you're going to touch down first. Okay, so water goes down pick up some color and right in toward the center here that's where I'm putting my strongest color and then I'm just going to kind of soften it so I rinsed my brush and just kind of soften it a little bit I'm going to come over to one over here it's actually I think I can go around to here get a tiny little bit of that purple and just kind of bring it right in there at the center let it work its way out just a bit. I'm going to skip this one because I have water over here. And I'm going to come around to this one here. I'm going to turn it around. There we go. Rinse my brush and kind of soften that a little bit. Susan, I love purples too. They're so pretty. This one here I think is, I can't tell if that's a leaf. I think that might be a leaf. I don't know if that's a leaf, but I think it is because the lines go out to the side. I can't see the whole thing because I only stamped a partial image. And yes, I said stamped. <laughs> it's kind of like stamping with dyes, isn't it? when you're working with the uh, the impression, the press plates. There we go. Let's get a little bit of water over here. So I'm going to skip one again. I'm going to get more water in my purple and then rinse all that off of the brush because I don't want too much on the brush. Come right up in the center. And then just 
we use that water to soften it a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to skip one over here and come over here to this one in a little bit of purple. I like to go right up the center. That The clematis has that kind of stripe that goes up the center that I think is really pretty. And I'm going to come over into here. I think it'll be safe enough. Just kind of touch right in here. some of that color off. I got a lot in there. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to leave that purple alone right now. I want all that purple to dry. I'm going to go on to green. And the green that I'm going to choose it's this really pretty kind of bright green right up here. All right, so I have some water on here. Let me get some of my green. A little more green. I'm not getting enough green. There we go. I'm literally just going to kind of come in and cover all of the green. I'm not going to worry about these being right next to each other right now because I just want to get green over them. It's a lot of green. Let's brush some of that off. There we go. So it's just kind of like one layer for the green. Let those be. I see one up here where it's kind of coming outside. I'm going to push it back in with the water and the brush. There we go. All right see how we're doing. All right, I'm going to come in here with some more of that purple and every other little petal and then we'll go up there again. It's literally just kind of a rinse and play, get water in there, remove water, um, remove color. So I'm pulling color down if I feel like I have too much. All right. It's just kind of playing. Get some water in. Come back in with some purple. Tiny bit of water. There we go. And just kind of move that around in there. I'm going to come over to this one. And again, I'm not trying to make these look real. I just want to get color in there and have some highlights and um, just have some really pretty purple, a little bit of bend to the flowers maybe. Got some over here, right up in here. Tiny bit, tiny bit, right in there. Get some water just to soften it a bit. What? Carla's asking what size brush are you using? That's a very good question, Carla. This is a size 4 brush. 
See that little four right there? That's, this one is a size four. There we go. Let me see. This looks like we've got a leaf over here. Here's a petal over here. Ooh, I got way too much water. I could see that pooling. There we go. I'm not a, um, I'm not so talented with watercolors that I can make something look real. So I just want it to be pretty. And I just try and have the lines in it be kind of smooth and you know we we give you lines in here to kind of play with so you kind of know the direction that things should be and um, you know that the paint should be flowing or that the lines should be flowing all right I'm gonna do this one way over here Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brenda. I, I hope it comes out. We'll see. <laughs> Just get a little bit of color in there. Now I'm going to flip this around. So a couple of those I left. Actually, I forgot about these on this little one here, didn't I? And here we can get in here. I'm going to come on the, out, on the inside of that. This one has a little bit of a flip to the, uh, to the petal. So I'm going to leave that kind of light up there so you get that little bend. Right up the center. This is the kind of stuff that I find incredibly relaxing. Alan thinks I'm nuts, but <laughs> but I do. I find it very relaxing. I'm going to get some more right in the center on that one, too. There we go. Just kind of soften that a little. Soften some of those lines that I put in there. I'm going to come over to this one. Come up the middle of that. Uh, Linda is saying, do you like the watercolors better than the marker water pens? Um, ooh, that's a good question. I love the markers. Um, this, I think, it's, it's different technique. And for what I'm doing here, I think I like this better. Um, when working with the pens, I tend to um, lay the color down, you know, with the pen and then try to move it. This is a little more free-flowing, um, I think. Um, it's just a different technique than with the pens. But I do love the pens. I need to get those out. Maybe I'll do that next time. I feel like I have a little more freedom with this. some of that back out. So 
soften some of those lines a bit. I like to get a lot of dark color like right into the center there. That's kind of what I'm doing right now, is just adding more dark color into the centers. A little more drama. There we go. Add a little more here. almost kind of flicking, I guess, like you would with a marker, just to get some of that texture in there with some of the lines. There we go. Let's go ahead and get some water on this petal here. Can't forget this petal. Pedaling as fast as you can. I'm pedaling as fast as I can. <laughs> I'm going to need you to change out this water, Alan, if you wouldn't mind. There we go. All right, I'm going to flip this over and give a little bit of attention to this one right down here. I don't feel like I have enough purple. Give me a moment, honey. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how different the colors look on the screen. How do they look on the screen? Yeah, it is a little bit brighter on the screen, isn't it? Get some of this out of here. There we go. Then, some of that up in here where we have this little fold. is about just about let me get some I got too much purple on here smooth these out a little bit a little bit of purple in here all right so now I think I'm going to move to green so I'm going to ask Alan to please change that water out there we go and then we're going to finish up with the green, with the leaves. I'm going to do two different colors of green on the leaves. All right. So I've got, if I look at this little sheet here, I've got the number 51, which is the green over here that I've been using. And then I'm going to go with number 52, which is right here. So when you see those two together, I think those are really pretty. I could go with the evergreen, but I think it's going to get a little too dark, so I'm not going to go with that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to come in and do the same thing. I'm just going to cover in green right now with the lighter green. So let me get water in the green first. I'm going to rinse my brush, get a little more water in that green, and clean my brush off. So now I can just dab into the green and get my color. And I'm literally just going to color 
or just paint over the entire leaf in this lighter green right now. And I'm going to do that all around. Get a little more green in here and just move that green around. I think I have too much water. There we go. Get a little more green. So this kind of limey green, it's kind of lime-like, is just really kind of bright. Well, Sharon Gullickson finally showed up. Sharon's here. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> she must have just showed up to claim a prize or something. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Welcome, Sharon. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, so let me get this little bit of green here. So this is just kind of like a foundation, like a base color for the green. All right, now I'm going to get some water into the darker green. And I'm going to flip this around, dry off my brush, and just kind of come in here just with a tiny little bit of water and with that darker green I'm using not a lot of it because it's definitely a darker green so I don't want a ton of it and I'm just going to kind of go up the center a little bit brush a lot of that off of there because I just want that darker to kind of blend in there a little bit and give me almost like the leaves are like two-tone. When it comes outside, just hit it with a little bit of water. And then I'm going to come in here with this green. Oh, that's a lot. Right down the center. I'm going to add a little bit of water and just kind of move that around a bit. Pick some back up with my water, pull the dark down. I'm actually going to come in with my lighter green now around the edge because I feel like I'm losing my lighter green and I don't want to lose that. One thing you can do too, if you feel like you've put too much paint down, keep in mind if you were to take, like if I take this, if I have water down on there and I go in and I press down like that, it collects some of that up and it actually will lighten it back up again for you. It'll lift some of the paint out of it. So you can do that. I don't necessarily want to do that here because I like the colors I'm achieving, but that is a way to lift some color off before it's completely dried. I'm going to just drag the tip of my brush into that darker green and come right up these stems. My brush is kind of dry right now. All right, just to get those stems a tiny little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get this stem here. Yeah, my brush might be too dry. There we go. Okay, so, ooh, too much water. All right. So I'm going to add some more water because I've got almost no water in my darker green now. And I need some water in there. 
Rinse my brush out. Dry it. And I'm going to pick up some color in my darker green and just kind of sprinkle that in a little bit. Clean my brush. And now I'm going to move that around. Get my lighter green in there again on the sides. There we go. I love these greens together. I think they're so pretty. So I'd like to just kind of paint it down the center, like that vein, and then move it out a little bit. And then I'm going to come in and kind of clean up those edges and just blend them a little bit together with that lighter color. And I think that looks really pretty. So I'm going to come in here. This one I think I'm going to kind of leave the dark on one side and pull some of that in lighter. Okay, so I'm using water now to remove some of that darker green. So I have a, I come in with a clean brush and move that color and that kind of gives you that little bit of variation. That dark. I'm going to keep the dark kind of at the bottom here, thinking about where shadow might be. And I'm going to do the same on this one here, right next to it. Let me clean my brush. Oh, Gail, I don't think you can be too relaxed, can you? <laughs> relaxed is good. You bring some of this up and out. There we go. We get a little bit here, just kind of on the underside. And now I'm just going to kind of blend it up a little bit. There we go. And then this one again, just a little bit down at the bottom of it. Clean my brush and move it around just a little bit. And I think we've got them all, but you know what I see is one little spot up there where I feel like it should be purple. <laughs> Which one was my purple? Oh my, 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 my. 38 right here. I forgot already. Um, let's clean that off. Give me a little bit. There you go too much. Just that little spot right there. Brush isn't wet. There you go. Just that little dab of purple. Okay. So Mr. Hunt, I need you one more time to clean my brush, please. Actually, before I go forward, hold on a minute. Yeah. No, nope, I need you to clean, not my brush, my water. So... Okay, so this is almost, we're getting there. This is almost done. But I do want to um, do a little bit of splatter painting on it. And I'm going to use this brush here, which is also a number four, but it's a different brand, and this is just kind of a fuller um, brush here. So... Remember when I mentioned the cutting die here, 
Okay, this is the clematis cutting die. So I'm not going to cut these these images out that I've painted, but I went ahead and, and I just cut out of my white cardstock. All right, and so this makes it so that I can. I just noticed I have water right there, a little drop of water. This makes it so that I can actually mask off my image. So I can go like this, and I can just lay this on here, and I can mask it. And I want to mask it because I want to sprinkle paint, OK? So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to mask off some of these things here. Um, I'm going to use my purple paint, which is right here. This is always so stressful for me. <laughs> I know. It's stressful for me, too. Here we go. Here's my purple. Now, before I do this all over the place, I am going to kind of test it a little bit. So I'm going to put this down here. <laughs> Make sure it's going to work. And look at my little splatters. Isn't that great? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some little splatters, and I'm covering up what I've just worked on. Kind of. Just kind of uncovered it. And I'm just going to put some little splatters. Because I don't want a lot of them. I just want a little, like a few. But I don't want them on my flowers. And I don't want them all over my sentiment either. So I just have those little splatters now. And then I can do the same thing kind of in the other direction, like this. If I can figure out which way this goes. I think it goes like this. What? You stress me out. I'm stressing you out? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting it over there. I forgot to cover that, didn't I? Oopsie daisy. It's just some pretty little splatters, not a lot. Okay. So I can move these out of the way now. And if I wanted to do some in green, I could do that. It just gives you a little bit of texture. So this is my little splatter thing. Isn't that fun? Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on top of here again. Move this out of the way before I really make a mess. And then, let's set this aside. That needs to dry. Mr. Hunt, would yes. you please do me a favor? Would you cart this away, get me some tissue so that I can clean that up? Okay. Oh, heck, I've got this. What am I thinking? Just use that. OK, there's that. Um, where's my wipe? I've got this wipe right here. Oh, no. Yeah, get me some water. Get me tissue. I got it where I don't want it. <laughs> Wet tissue. I got it on my counter. Oh, no. No, it's not good. I don't want it on my counter. <laughs> just give me it. Sorry, everybody. Got to clean a little bit. It's just watercolor. It'll come off. There we go. Oh, yeah, you got all over the place. I did. I, I made a little bit of a mess. It's kind of all over. It's all over my stuff. <laughs> this is what happens when you craft. It's even on the little giveaway there. Okay, we're done. Got that cleaned. Okay, so here we go. You guys got to watch me clean. Isn't that exciting? So here we go. Look how pretty that is. I think it's just gorgeous. I love it. All right, so from here, it's not dry. <laughs> I want to put it on my card base here, but it's not dry. And lay it on your card base. Well, I want to put foam behind it. Well, you can still but do that. I will. No, I, I don't want to turn it over because I don't want to smear the paint. Just lay the foam down. So, no, it's all right. So this is the way it's going to look. And I figured it would be like this. That's, isn't it pretty? And then here's the one that I did in pink. 
And I think that looks gorgeous too. Yay! So to finish this, once it's dry, I'm gonna put a layer of foam on the back and I'm gonna layer it up on this card topper. And then I'll put it onto a card base and then I will have two beautiful, beautiful, I think gorgeous clematis cards. Uh, Do you I like would, them? I would put it on a... On a what? Backer card, that color, the envelope. Nah, I'm going to keep it nice and clean. Alan's saying he would put it on a backer card, the same color as this, yeah. but I don't want to do that. I just want to see, like, it'll look like this. See how this is up on foam? That beautiful white on white, so you get that little bit of an edge, and I think it's really pretty. So I'm going to leave it clean and simple, just like that. So, I think... By, all, by golly. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Another little thing. I had actually, remember when I was just saying a minute ago, this is still wet, so I don't want to mess with it. I didn't wait long enough for this one to dry, so I smeared or smudged some of that. So another little tip. I just took some. This is Windsor Newton. Um, it's just a, um, it's basically just white pigment or permit, uh, permanent paint. And I literally just touched it up on there, and you can't even see it. I just painted right over the top of where I made a mistake. I even had some of my ink in there from when I when I um, when I was letter pressing because I I made a mistake. Um, another thing you can do too, which I did on this one, I don't know if you can see, I put a little bit of blue up in in some of these little crevices because I had gone outside with the paint. The paint had it had come outside a little bit. And I thought I'm just gonna go over it with some blue and it just adds some little highlights. So that was really pretty. You know, I could do that one on this one as well. But just some different fun little things. So anyway, here's two versions of the same card. So I hope that you like them. I think they're really pretty. I love them. I love this set. You can actually do this in just about any color. I mean if you can imagine this in blues and yellows and you know, if you want to come in the centers, like I'm leaving the centers on this one white because I think it looks really pretty. But on this one, I did it in yellow. So this one, I actually added just a tiny little bit of yellow into the centers. If you want to add color in, if you want to add a different color, I mean, just have fun with it. But I think this one looks really pretty with the white centers, so I'm not going to add anything in there because I really like it. So anyway, all right, let's go ahead and change the camera back, Mr. Hunt. <laughs> All right, so that is really it. That is my two cards. I hope that you like them. Uh, we're going to have a giveaway, so stick with me for just a minute, but I just want to check and see if we have any questions out here that I need to answer. Were there any that, that you saw come across that I need to answer? I have not. No? All right. Well, Nana may have. Okay, well, if you have a question, get it out there. For now, we're going to do a giveaway, and I think... The giveaway, <laughs> what can the giveaway be? Should it be clematis? Oh, I thought you were talking about those things. Well, then we're going to do that too. Oh. We're going to actually give away one set of the clematis um, impression letter press, press plates. And actually, let's do two. We're going to give away two. Ah! We're going to get, so okay. we're going to choose, choose two winners. Okay. I've also got the most recent version or copy of uh, Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. And um, so we're going to give away one of these um, with each as well. Look at, did you guys see this yet? That's our advertisement right there. Isn't it gorgeous for the letterpress? I think it's so pretty. Love it. But this magazine, if you guys don't already get this magazine, you can get this at, um, at scrapbook.com. Um, you, can, you can get it on the Scrapbook Cards Today magazine um, website. It's an amazing, amazing magazine. Best one out there. So I've got two copies to give away. So we're going to choose two winners tonight. You're going to get the Clematis letterpress press plates. All right. You're also going to get one of the magazines. So Mr. Hunt... Everybody, we don't know that you're here unless you've left a comment. So put a comment out there. Let us know that you want to win this. So put something out there that says, me, 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 if you want the Clematis and the magazine. I don't want to send it. Like, if you don't want to do letterpress, right, 
then you may not want this die set, but somebody somebody wants it. So let let us know. Say me, 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 me. <laughs> uh, I don't see any me, me, me's. <laughs> Carol, Carol Guy. Carol Guy. Carol Guy. Carol Guy, you are one of our winners. Congratulations. Woo! We need one more. Give me one more name. Gladys Amparo Lagos Grimaldi. Okay, Gladys. <laughs> Gladys something, 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 yeah. something Grimaldi. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get it all. But Gladys, you won too. Yay! So we've got two winners. Congratulations to both of you. Please, if you would both send me your complete name and mailing address, send it to customer service at ldrscreative.com. Um, Linnea is going to get that email out there for you. I need your complete name and mailing address so that we can get your prize in the mail right away. So Merry Christmas to both of you. You have some little stocking stuffers for yourselves. Um, thank you everybody for being here tonight and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and Happy New Year and all that to everybody. I do have one more announcement though. So we have a ton of stuff going on as everybody does throughout the holidays um, with the new year. Um, we have trade show coming up in January. We have all kinds of HSN stuff. We have a lot happening um, and it's, you know, it's time for me to have a little bit of a break too. So as I mentioned early on, I'm having an issue with my shoulder and my back um, and it's, it's due to everything that we're doing. So um, I need to take care of my health a little bit. My husband is still you know, dealing with his shoulder. So we're gonna take a one month break from the lives. We have a lot to do. Um, and, um, and we're going to spend some family time too. So uh, we're going to be back here doing our lives um, after our trade show. So it'll be like maybe the third, third to the fourth week in January. We will make an announcement um, well before we're coming back. So everybody knows when, but we are going to take, we're going to take about a month away from doing the lives just so we can have, um, you know, have a little bit of downtime. Time to ship everything out. Yeah, time to ship everything out, but it'll give us a little bit of time. It'll just be one less thing that we've got to, to do. And I love doing it, but everything is kind of taking its toll on us a little bit. So anyway, we're going to have a little break. So um, that being said, uh, we're going to get going for now. I thank you so much for being here, uh, for being here with us, you know, almost every week. We've been doing this now since, since COVID started, and it is absolutely... It's still a joy, and I love joining you here and crafting with you. Um, so uh, don't forget about us in this next month. Uh, please come back to us when we come back uh, later in January. Uh, but have a wonderful evening, fantastic weekend, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, all of those things. Hopefully I'm covering, I don't know what they all are, but everybody, we wish you, we wish you the best and Happy New Year to you all. We will still be sending out, you know, our emails. We'll still have our inspiration. Our blog is still going. Watch our Instagram. Um, we'll still have um, videos going up on our YouTube channel. So we're not shutting everything down. So if you haven't already subscribed to us, please go ahead so, and do that um, on our website and um, subscribe to our YouTube channel too so that you get notifications of everything. So anyway, everybody have a wonderful evening. Um, Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Bye for now. <laughs>